Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cumanera, an Excorians Points podcast, or an all queer cast Numenera podcast. I'm Kenny, the cast member who plays the lovable and simple lad Hillian. If you love our show, we hope you'll rate us and review us on iTunes or wherever you consume your podcasts. Every review makes Kelric, the GM and producer's eyes, sparkle and helps new listeners to find us. We don't pay to advertise any of the podcasts on the Excorians Points Network, so we hope you'll recommend us to your friends and just about anyone. Did you know that we had a Patreon? We are grateful to everyone who's already become a patron. You keep our mics on and our dice rolling. We've got some great rewards, so check them out at patreon.com slash Points. Be gay. Roll dice. An LGBTQIA actual play podcast network. And welcome. This is Cuminera, uh, our all queer cast Numenera game. I'm Kelric. I am the narrator, and today I am here with my beautiful cast. My pronouns are he, him. And why don't we just start with uh, our normal order? So, Aaron. Hi, uh, my name is Aaron. Uh, my pronouns are they, them, and I play Rylu, a graceful glaive who speaks with a silver tongue. And they also use they, them pronouns. What's up, y'all? I'm Cage. I use she, hers pronouns, and I'll be playing Charlie, who's a strong-willed nano who talks to machines, and her pronouns are also she, hers. Hello, my name is Kenny. Uh, my pronouns are he, they. I play Hillian Jossa, an earnest jack who howls at the moon, and uh, their pronouns are he, his. Okay, so as a reminder, you all... I'm showing you a map of the Bog Demi Forest so you can you know, see where you're going, where you're coming from, and how far that is. I mean, um, and, you know, you can go from there. Kenny, you were going to do the um, recap? Was I, though? Oh, you, oh, you totally oh okay. Uh, sure. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, we're, we're going off on our own path to uh, Jerisi. Charlie's been on this road before and attempts to be contemplative. Uh, Rylu processes through conversation, peppering Charlie with questions in order to quiet their mind and find out who Tiuna would have trusted. We stop for lunch next to a water source, and I, I, I'm hungry, so I, I'm going to go foraging, and, and, and I chase Jacques into the woods nearby, looking for mushrooms. Shirog uh, emerged from the underbrush to attack the party. And, and Rylu attempts to communicate with them, but they don't communicate back. We attack the Shirog and successfully defend ourselves. But Rylu's weapons are now coated in the scent of dead Shirog, described as moldy cinnamon. The party decides, or we, <laughs> decide to drag the corpses along with us, partially to, to feed me later, I guess. Okay. This is this is what happens when I read directly from my notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. So yes, that's exactly what happened. You all left Ephraimon at long last, I suppose, is how you all look at it. I don't know. <laughs> and you followed the you started following the road up to Jerisi. You managed to make it to a fairly nice I wouldn't call it bucolic or anything, but fairly nice. Uh, camping spot there was a firing and there was a tower that you had discussed whether Halion or the two of you should be in it and I think you had decided that Halion would sleep up there with the two dead bodies was that right? is that what we decided I'm, I'm asking oh okay I think, that's what was in I think we I think Hillian is asleep by the fire and we were going to take turns up in the tower on watch so that way we had a better view of the lay of the land. Yeah. And I think Rylu would have taken the Anin off in a distance because I don't want our Anin to die. Um, and then place one of the bodies near, um, like close enough to where, you know, we would know where they are and tether them. But um and then put put like one of the bodies like nearish to Hillian, off to the side a little bit of the Chirog. Okay. So with that said, how far away are you putting the Anine? I mean, are you going to be near enough that you can get to them if you need? 
need to, or what's the, what's the, what's the plan? I feel like we probably have them. Let me look at this map real quick before I just say shit. Um, I feel like if Hillian's near that big old fire pit, we probably have them uh, back and to the left, like just beyond that tree line behind the tower. So that way Hillian would have to like pass through us. Okay. So why don't you just place yourselves on the map so I can see where you are starting out just for uh, me. See who can. Is there a dead body pin somewhere? Do we have a random body? <laughs> It's almost like Hallian's coming out tonight, y'all. Oh, no. Which, I don't know that Charlie really knows that it happens multiple nights in a row. <laughs> so this is going to be a good time. Didn't Riley tell you that, like, we're expecting Hallian tonight? Last I episode? I remember. Well, I feel like Riley would tell you, like... Okay. Yes, he transforms. Because <laughs> you would be like, why, why are we carrying a dead body? Like, you know. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, we did talk about that. Because I lied then and said that we would probably be able to sell it later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so the camp is all set up. You all have been here long enough to do your recovery rolls, so you should be completely filled up on mm -hmm. your uh, things. And you all have set everything up. Uh, um. Are you doing any exploring up in this thing? Are you just setting up your bedrolls in this tower? What are you doing with this tower thing? What do you what's what's going on with that? Because I see that Charlie is uh, is on the ground, but Riley was up there. I figured we were taking probably turns being on watch, so that we were not both awake the whole night. Okay. Yeah, but you shouldn't be. Yes, but you shouldn't be sleeping next to Hillian if, when he transfers. Oh, okay, good call. Yeah, so I guess Charlie probably is up there too. And we're just taking shifts, so basically yeah. every four hours, maybe. I don't know how that would work, but two people. How but you explain to Hillian they're not allowed to come up with you? We do it after <laughs> he goes to sleep. <laughs> so, all right. Um, how is Hillian doing? I mean, it's day two, and you've had your you've you've had an afternoon of it, and now you are all everyone else is you know, kind of getting camp ready. What is, what is Hillian doing? So I, I think that the last transformation was very, um, well, I mean, all, every transformation is traumatic for Hillian, but um, I think <laughs> that um, Hillian has sort of an awareness that this is happening now or that something is off with, with, you know, their routine and what happened with Nils and everything. So um, I think, he is, you know, he was he was silent, moody boy before, but now he's very silent and very contemplative. And with the hunger pains, I think he's like trying to fight through them and trying to ignore them more than trying to give in to them. Okay. What would they be physically doing? Like, are they pacing around? Or are they just gonna try and roll over and go to sleep to forget it? Or they what are they doing? He is going to be um, busying himself around the camp, so trying to make himself helpful, mm -hmm. tending the fire. Like, um, if Rylu uh, gave, like, what tasks would Rylu give Hillian? Um, well, Rylu's probably cooking food as best as they know how. So they would probably, I mean, before we set up how we did on the map, I figured like uh, Tiuna and Rylu's thing was like, we set up the tent like normal, like we set up everything like it's normal. And then Hillian goes to sleep and we tear it all down and do what we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would probably be like, oh, uh, yes, Hillian, would you, would you mind um, unpacking the rations? And then, oh, wait, that's dangerous for Hillian. Oh, yeah, no, oh. like... As you like, kind of like go through these mental tasks and and start trying to assign them, and you are like actually cooking food, like Hillian kind of grabs his stomach and goes, "Oh, um, I, I'm gonna get some kindling. I, I promise I'll be close. I, I I won't go into the woods. I'll be close, but I, I'm gonna get some kindling." How close to nighttime is it? Yeah, you've been traveling quite a bit. That battle took you a little while, and. Carrying the bodies while the Indian are strong, it, it slowed you down a bit. 
So I would say after all of this prep stuff, you're probably looking at, you know, early evening heading into dusk. So Charlie, can you come finish this up? Oh, yeah. And Charlie will go over and help out. Helene, do you want some company? Um, uh, no, um, I, I, I'm okay. I, I, I appreciate it. All right. And, um, Riley will go back to doing something like unpacking a, a camp thing. No, I don't camp. Um, or like setting up their tent or whatever. I don't know, camp. Um, <laughs> listen, I'm a city person through and through. Um, Aaron's like, I'm going to hoist the mainsail. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> don't trash my Sea of Thieves game, all right? <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I would go back to like, I don't know, setting up my tent or whatever. And um, But I would wait for Hilly to be like a distance away. And then like uh, if he breaks through the tree line, kind of start to follow in that direction. Like leaving a respectable distance in case Hillian's going to use the bathroom, but like making sure <laughs> that Hillian doesn't get lost. That seems quite reasonable because you no longer have an unbreakable scar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Hillian's gonna be in the clearing, like so to the like north east of the of the um tower of uh the thing, um picking up, you know, twigs and brush and things to to, to kindle fire in that area. And um, anything that looks like it could be food, um, Hillian kind of either stamps on or like throws into the brush or feeds to Jacques. Okay. And uh, I want to remind you in the map that I've made that there, um, the dark area where all the trees are is land, but this lighter area is water. So mm -hmm. on the northeast and southwestern sides of mm. the camp you are surrounded by water so there's only an access from the northwest which brings them right to, brings whatever uh, Hillian is doing to the tower and from the southeast which is across the road so if you're from the tower you'd be able to see anything coming so this is a pretty secure spot you're in you can really tell that whoever decided to build this here planned this out really decently for being in the Abad Den of the Forest. It's actually a fairly secure location because it's only two main points of entry that you have to worry about unless there are water creatures you're thinking <laughs> might be you know, coming to visit. Calric, is that foreshadowing? What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just asking questions, pointing things out, giving you all some info. Hey, somebody's throwing shit. That's right. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so you're in there um, walking around trying to find twigs and stuff. Are you trying to be stealthy or are you just too distracted by food? What are you doing here? I think Killian's distracted by food and sheer willpower. <laughs> if you could roll a speed roll for stealth. Just because just, maybe okay. they aren't being. I'm not going to expend any effort because. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying. Not trying. There we go. Oh! oh that doesn't even pass a TD zero. I was really hoping to be a one. But that's okay. Coward just fishes for the ones. Does anyone else mm -hmm. notice that? <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, you want to roll for that? What am I rolling for? Uh. <laughs> Walking. A one? Trivial? You're rolling for a one. <laughs> I just be able to do this? <laughs> you can always make that argument. <laughs> Lift that spoon. All right. Well, I wasn't planning on this happening quite so soon, but that's totally cool. It's going to be, I would like for Hillian to roll an int check for a perception. Okay. Uh, again, I'm not going to do this with any effort because mm -hmm. he's distracted. Oh! He doesn't need to! <laughs> That's a <laughs> nat 20! <laughs> well, that gives you the opportunity to see the Jurassic are coming. Oh. What? <laughs> so, if you all would be so kind as to roll initiative, 
That would be great. What are you kidding? Is? Initiative? Oh, it's a Jurassic. Art. What do you think's gonna happen? I wait, think wait. I'm gonna. Oh, I can't run away from it either. No. Oh, oh, well, you can run. <laughs> Feel free to run. Would anyone like to describe a Jurassic? Art? For us. Those of you listening, uh, welcome to our final episode of Cuban Era. <laughs> Eric has decided that uh, he's tired of running this show. Mm-hmm. Can you apply effort to oh, that initiative. initiative? I don't think so. Okay. So I'm just going to say no. All right. So what Wait, are our rules here? Jurassic. <laughs> We've got... Oh dear. Can I um, use my major effect uh, to be able to react immediately? I am going to definitely give you that. Uh, I think just as part of the natural 20, you get to react. You see a Jurassic coming. And does anyone want to describe what a Jurassic looks like? If you have any questions, there's a picture of one right over my shoulder. It's basically a giant T Rexy looking lizardy huge thing. That will kill us all. Yes. Okay. So as Hillian is traipsing through this for forest, stomping on what anything that might be food, basically just really struggling because they're so distracted by the hunger that they're feeling. They're snapping twigs. They're like, oh, this branch is too big to go into the fire. They're cracking it down. All kinds of noise. They are also looking around. I think it's because they're just like, is there food over there? Can I step on it so I don't eat it? Just, you know, a little bit of crankiness. So Hillian is walking through. This is happening. And as they're looking around, they see a flash of what is looks like a very large and colorful lizard shape giant like t-rex sized thing as it's as colorful as any flower you have ever seen but one of the things that really grabs Hillian's attention is there is are a lot of teeth on this flower and it is moving extremely <laughs> quickly and it seems to be moving extremely quickly towards you now like what distance away is this is this long range it is long range with, okay. uh, with your your roll of 20 you catch it pretty far away so you do have time to react to it um uh yeah hillian will turn around and yell out uh Jurascar, get into the 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 what is that called is it like a Tower? tower like a watchtower get into the tower <laughs> <laughs> okay as soon as you call out then uh, the, re- the other two of you should roll initiative if you happen because i don't see it oh i did it's a 13. okay yeah mine's I rolled a four okay so 13 is what we got versus their 21. It's a oh my gosh <laughs> hey kelrick why did you wake up like this this morning <laughs> is charging in and you all can see it because it's very large especially once you get up into the tower and it go it manages to go from long range since they're so fast i'm gonna say that it gets into short range in the amount of time it takes you to get to the tower and hillian to get back to the campsite and out of the forest so you all are in this little clearing area and um, it's heading right towards your anines. Well, <laughs> and it's ex- it is done with its turn because it was just running. Are they tall enough that they are like level with us while we're in the tower, or do we have like a height advantage on them now? You have a very, very slight height advantage. Like, oh goodness. You head up, it would probably be able to grab on breathe on us <laughs> yeah. oh gross okay so now are we all in the tower just the two of you i believe hillian is 
I'm on the, the ground. I have the base. Oh no! Wasn't I following Hillian when that was all happening? You were. You were still at, in the the camp. You're between Hillian and us, though. Yeah. So. Oh okay. Yeah. As long as I'm on the ground, I'm 100% going to do a thing. Then, do a thing. So. If you look in your party sheet, you will see that there are three the three poisons that you got from Nils in there. Aha. These oh, are the well. things that you have. You've collected the blowgun and knife from Nils. You also collected the three poisons. And there is a magnetic shield cipher. Oh, cool. I didn't realize we just had like a party sheet. Well. So in here is the mind controlling poison. If you open it. Uh, first, you need to roll a d6 and add two to determine the level of the poison. Well, so now that there is this thing, and also it's not what was in my inventory, which has a very confusing uh, text, can I do something else? Yeah, you can do whatever else you want. Okay, cool. Because like, that's I don't know what I I don't know what I have in my inventory then. I don't um, okay. Um, Wow, okay. Uh, do we know that these are all what they are? Uh, you can do a an intellect check to see if you can figure out, but you never bothered to. You were just like, oh yeah, I've got poisons in here. Yeah, we can try that. That's going to go terribly. Um, I have I, I have a disadvantage in that for Numenera. Perfect. Um, but I also do have two edge, so it's only going to cost me a one point to apply effort. So it basically evens it out. We're going to go on a straight die roll. Cool. Let's see what you got. A three. Nope. You've got no idea what any of these are. You just know that they're poisons. Cool. Um. <laughs> you can roll a d3, and it'll just be one, two, three from the top down. If you want to just try and use one. <laughs> do it. Well, it's what would what would Rylu do in this situation? Because everyone knows Duraska are basically death. Thanks. Let's just play a game of grab a random poison and apply it to my weapon and throw it. Sure. Roll a 1d3. Wait. All right. Okay. So you have taken the third poison and you're applying it to your weapon or what are you doing with it? Yeah, I'm applying it to, I'm, I'm latching it onto my razor ring. So in my opinion, this thing probably looks like um, the handle that I was describing and you yeah. just clip it on and your bla my blade starts spinning through it. And uh, and then I will chuck it at the Jurassic. So first, roll me a one d six plus two. Okay. Uh, one d six. So four plus two. So it is a level six uh, poison that you uh, have applied. You've applied poison. The Jurassic is within short range, and you're on the ground. Yep. You have your razor ring. Yep, both of them. Well. Um, I'm going to be real honest with y'all. This is a uh, TD7 uh, thing, so you have to roll a 21 or better to hit unless you can lower that number. So, you're going to try and hit it? I mean, Rylu doesn't know that. that the Rylu just sees that it, it moved from long range to short range. Like, It is not difficult to see how fast this thing is moving. Um, however, so, Rylu's really good at what they do, great. so let's so, try. Rylu is going to attempt to hit it? What is, yes. What does that roll look like for us? Let's see. We're building a pool. Hold on. <laughs> awesome. Tell us what that um, looks like. I'm reading my abilities right now, oh. so <laughs> let's see. I'm, uh, you think I'm pulling out all the stops. Uh, so I get one level for speed light range. Um, I'm proficient with my weapons. Mm -hmm. I'm going to apply two levels of effort to this. Okay. So that's going to be... That takes it down to a four. Yes. And, and... I will give you careful movement. Cause cool. I think that that is definitely something that you're doing. You're, you're applying poison to the, your blade. I think you're going to be pretty careful. Sounds like a good thing to me, because I'm going to need everything I can. And that makes it a level three. So a TD three. Um, to hit. I'm, okay, I'm trying to figure out how to put this into the thing, because it's going to take off. 
It's going to be speed. As far as I'm concerned, if you just do a, a straight right. roll, cool. um, we uh, we can accept it. Just make sure you deduct what you need to. You hit a Jurassic, and that poison does six points of damage, huh. and it does have a different effect attached to it. So when you hit them, why don't you describe what the hit looks like, and then I will tell you what happened. Yeah, so I think that Rylu sees this Jurassic charging. There's, you know, there's the tower, Rylu, Hillian, Jurassic. And, like, Rylu is not going to let Hillian get eaten by a Jurassic. And also, like, there's the Anine as well. So, you know, that's kind of last on the mind. It's really Hillian. But, you know, Rylu's willing to die for Hillian. And so Rylu kind of. I don't know if Hillian passes by or however the positioning works, but Rylu, if Hillian's in front of him, just like runs over to their bags, grabs a random poison and slaps it on and just goes, duck! And um, and chucks the razor ring and like it flies in this arc and it just slashes across the Jurassic's chest. That poison is extremely fast acting. As it gets cut across the chest, the Jurassic takes about seven steps because they're so fast. It's just running. And then it face plants into the ground. It falls and lays there. Its eyes are open and tracking everything. It, but it is not moving. So, you don't know how long this will last, but you do know that you have a finite period of time where that Jurassic it appears to be pretty much helpless. It's also alive. <laughs> yeah, it's alive. And, yeah. Uh, it has... It, it, it took your hit, but what are you gonna do... Hillian and Charlie once you see that happen because it, it literally face plants into the ground and slides up to where you're at. Your Anine are going crazy, by the way. I hope you tied them down super, super well because that Jurassic is freaking them out. If you do not pay attention to this, you will lose them. That makes it either Charlie or Hillian's turn whomever you all wish. Would Draskar be considered uh, thinking... What does it say in here? Um, thinking being? Do they think? Do Draskar think? <laughs> no, I would not think so because... Darn. They are... <laughs> while they're apex predator reptiles, they are also... B their whole focus is just on getting food and mm -hmm, hunting. Mm -hmm, that's, what, mm -hmm. that's all they do. So I would not say that they are thinking. Cool. So we won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you do um, know that you want to take care of this before this one gets back up, if at all possible, because damn Jurassic Park. Mm hmm. That works like that dress car's thick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most of what I could do would be just doing an onslaught or throwing a razor ring at it as well. Describe what Charlie sees before they do anything. So they have seen this. What, how, how, do, how are they reacting to seeing a Jurassic knowing, living from growing up in Ephraimon, so knowing about them? And yeah, well... Then you see this thing face plant. What's going on with Charlie for that? Yeah, so uh, as soon as Hillian yelled that there was Draskar coming, she split up into the tower. Um, and then, and she, so she sees it coming at her because now she has like that perspective, right? And she's probably worried about Hillian and. Rylu being on the ground and is probably looking down at them and then all of a sudden like follows the razor ring that Rylu threw and then sees the Jurassic going down and is like 
in absolute like shock that that worked because <laughs> the chances of that happening are pretty slim and uh, would probably see this as the opportunity to attack because you're not going to outrun a Tarascar <laughs> and she doesn't know how long this thing's going to be down. And so give me a perception check because Charlie knows one other thing about Jurassic. Is that an intellect roll? Yes. Just a straight intellect roll. You can add effort if you want to. You do not. Ooh, 16. So you remember that Jurassic sometimes hunt alone, sometimes hunt in pairs. Right. And so looking around with a 16, you do not see a second Jurassic, but you don't know if that's what because you can't see it yet or it's yeah it's not there well just from from that like i think charlie will kind of yell out to the group i think it might be alone but we can't be for sure uh we should probably take care of it as quickly as possible so that way we don't have to take care of two at one time that's a <laughs> day in the heat of the moment <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i guess she'll probably just use Onslaught. So if I do the intellect one, it'll ignore armor. Okay. Um, so that way, because I don't think my physical one would probably hit otherwise. Okay. Then you don't even have to roll for this mm -mm. because it's paralyzed. It, it's it's down. It doesn't have a speed defense. It, it's not moving for right this instant. So, how much damage does that do? Two, uh, in, uh, for intellect. So it does two damage? Yeah. Okay. So that's dealt. Um, I think Hillian will, um, go into one of his pouches and pull out, um, I forgot what this what we flavored this one as um but um Hillian has a detonation cipher okay um and so let's call it uh, like a small organic looking pearl um that we picked up from inside the um the tree great so first roll me a 1d6 plus 2 okay Nice. That's an eight. Okay, so that's a level eight cipher. Go ahead and. Do you want me to roll the d one hundred to find out what kind it was? Yes. Okay. And you can just click on the effects. Is that so literally a one? Wow. It, yeah. So it's a, a self disrupting cipher. Okay, so it harms flesh only. That seems to work in this case. Cool. Um, so. It says it's either an explosive device, thrown short range, or a handheld long range. I'm not sure. You are not long range, so okay. it's short range. Go ahead and it's it's a. Do you have anything for uh, movement like anything? You don't have anything like graceful movement or anything like that. Oh no. Mm -mm. Yeah. So just make a uh, yeah a TD two difficulty roll i'm i'm going to expend like three effort to do this because stakes are high my understanding is one effort is basically dropping it down by one step right and you can only apply two effort right i can apply three because i leveled up okay so you can apply three effort which the max you need to apply is two, two. to bring okay. it down to a, you a don't even have to roll. okay cool. so so yeah i'm gonna apply two effort Cool. So you throw it. It does eight points of damage to this Draskar, which looks pretty beat up. What does it look like when that hits? I think that when it hits, it explodes into this mm. gel. It covers the the area that uh, impacted on the Draskar, and it starts making the the skin just kind of melt. Yeah, I can totally see that. It, uh, what color is it? I think it's like a light blue. Okay, so this light blue gel just starts eating into the Jurassic, and 
it screams. It's extremely pissed off. It's sort of thrashing around, but it is not. Um, it, it's not moving. Other than that, it does seem to be getting a little bit more ability to squirm around, but it doesn't get a an action this turn. So I think it's able to sort of get up and start moving away or away from the spot it's in. I'd say it's moving closer to you because it's enraged at this point, but all it seems to be able to do is run. So it's going to be, it has run into the camp uh, towards Rylu because Rylu's the one who hit it and Hillian, it saw them throw the um, pearl thing at it. So yeah, it is right up on. It is right next to you two. And it's your turn again. Yeah, I think um, Rylu is going to pull out that blade, the, my artifact that we've been practicing with. Um, and going to go go take a, take a stab. Okay, so it is still moving really quickly. So it does have the TD5 difficulty to hit. Cool. So feel free to spend whatever you need to to yep. this giant Jurassic that looks like a T Rex with flippers instead of hands <laughs> and a melting face now. Yeah, and, and it's <laughs> purely nightmare fuel right now. Yeah, it is. Oh it's god, a white striped flower in color, very bright with this sky blue gel eating away at you know part of its side. And gross. gash across its chest. So gross. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's um, bleeding. Well, thankfully, Rylu is trained with medium blades as well. How convenient. How it's like Rylu's a weapons master. Something like or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that'll bring it down to a four. And then I'm very much so going to apply effort. But. This is going to take out of might as a sword? As a, as a close... Okay, cool. So... And Rylu, all of your recovery stuff is um, flanked. So that doesn't seem right. It seems like... Oh, this is the same night. For some reason, I, I, yeah. when I when we started, I was like, oh, we're going on. And I was so I just there cleared them. Okay, yeah. so yeah, there you go. So cool. now, go ahead. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to apply effort there. I have one edge. And so it's going to bring it down to a TD. I have two edge in... Um, I have two edge in intellect. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, I'm going to apply two levels of effort because uh, I need to hit this. So it's going to bring it down to a TD6. Uh, or a uh, TD5. two. It's, it's six or better. There you go. Okay. So, so just roll it. Are you kidding me? All right, man. Uh, that was another one. Oh my gosh. This is why I roll physical dice. It's not much better, but it's not this many ones. Your second one. Out of three rolls. <laughs> Yo, I'm just saying. Oh, I thought that was a one again. <laughs> it's a seven. Oh. What's really funny is. Oh my goodness. So you used up your good roll before you got there. But a seven hits. Ugh. So how much damage does that do? It's a uh it's a medium blade, so it'll take four points of damage. Okay, you don't have anything to add to that. Not that so I can think of now. That is added, and are you going to move or are you going to step forward and hit? What does this attack look like? So Rylu sees this Duraskar charging forward towards both me and Hillian, and um, Rylu is a reckless teenager. Uh, so Rylu is going to run forward and try to like hamstring it. So they grab their they grab the sword off their back and they run past and they like slide underneath the body and slash at the leg. So now they're behind the Duraskar. Nice. Okay. Yeah, and the Duraskar has no action to take. So you are perfectly capable of doing this who's going next are you talking to each other or are you just 
doing this run? What's happening? I mean, Riley's just focused on the fight. Okay. Makes sense. <laughs> Why does that not surprise me? It's, it's Riley. <laughs> I feel like like Riley goes like completely silent when fighting. <laughs> like just like game face. Yep. <laughs> So who wants to take their turn next? Um, I think Hillian um, will uh, expend uh, the two intellect points and uh, give everyone an encouragement uh, for defense rolls. <laughs> so Hillian will be like, um, everyone just be careful. And it, it looks like it's gonna charge again. And um, will then position themselves behind the tower okay so Hillian's basically taking a defensive positioning yes but also smart giving everyone uh, a boost to their um, yeah that's great defense rolls next uh, that's awesome so what is Charlie doing so mechanically what does that do for defense rolls it just makes it to where um, you have an asset. You get like a, you get an asset. asset. Okay. You have plus one to your roll, basically. Cool. Uh, well, Charlie also has a razor ring, although just one. And I think she might want to try to use that. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Charlie is not built for combat, <laughs> especially with beings that that are non-thinking beings. Uh, so she's. Less than helpful. Did a lot too. Just, it actually does more damage than the razor ring. It does two more points of damage. Oh, I thought it did the. Does four damage. Are razor rings that weak? Okay. Well, then maybe I'll do the physical onslaught then. That's the reason I thought the razor ring did more damage. The razor ring only does two damage, but it lowers the difficulty a step because it's a light weapon. Mm -hmm. So you're more. Oh. And most things, you know, aren't Jurassic. Yeah, I'll do the intellect, uh, physical, the uh, one. Yeah, or, yes. What did I say? I don't even know what I said. The stat it uses is intellect. For oh, right. Yes. The onslaught physical uh, attack. Mm -hmm. um, so it automatically costs one out of your int pool to use. Well, I have one edge, Perfect. so it, yep. Yeah. And then... I'll apply effort to the roll mm -hmm. to try to, uh, I have two effort that I can use. Okay. So that takes it to a TD three. So you have to roll a nine or better. Yeah. I think that should be good. Right? Yeah. We're good. <laughs> okay. Oh no. That's a seven. That's a seven. So no, you do not hit. I do not hit. Charlie, you're up there. You have your razor ring. Uh, I mean, you have your mental onslaught. What does it look like when you attempt to use that? I, I actually described that. This is the yeah. Thing. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I, I think no, I think I did because this is the the one where the physical one is the one that looks kind of like a toned down version of the Iron Wind. Um, so she concentrates looking at the Jurassicar and um, she. Because she's a nano and um, particularly a nano that talks to machines, I imagine it being that she somehow is able to like get some of the nanites that are in there to like kind of like attack physically the Jurassicar. Okay. Cool. And are you just staying up in the tower? Yeah, uh, Charlie's frightened. So <laughs> she feels like this is the best uh, vantage point that she can get. So. And while obviously she wants her party members to survive, she is in like full self-preservation mode right now. <laughs> okay. That makes perfect sense. So now it's the Jurassic's turn. And the Jurassicar is going to... It, it screams, obviously, when Riley cuts it. And it is going to wheel about trying to stomp on you and hit you it can't seem to focus enough to actually bite at you the the point the poison seems to be affecting its nervous system in a really intense way and so it is kind of jerkily moving around and it's very fast but it's it's almost like when you're watching um 
something on TV and you see uh, things glitching, you know, how it, it sort of stutters as it's going. That seems to be what the Jurassic is doing. So it's not super coordinated. It's it's really off um, its, its normal killing ability. And so it is moving around the campsite and doing things. It probably, you know, hits the tower just sort of accidentally as it's jerking around. And it stops just shy of the fire, the fire space. But it is... It doesn't seem to be able to attack anyone right now. It's just kind of thrashing about. Why don't I get a... Yeah, the only person who would have to roll any sort of defense roll is Rylu. And I think with the poison effect that's on the Jurassic and your careful movements and your uh, normal abilities that it's not even a... It, there's, there's, you have zero difficulty in avoiding this Jurassic. Dancing through those stomping feet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think that, that Rylu is able to pull all of the stops out and just doesn't even have to worry about a defense roll. So that makes it y'all's turn again. You all have a ghost telling you <laughs> a Jurassic this happened to it. Cool. Who's going to take their turn first? I feel like Rylu's been doing the most damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so is my razor ring within distance of me to run and grab? When you threw it, it was short range, so mm -hmm. you can run in that direction, and I think you'd have to roll to find it, because you did throw it into the woods. Oh, was the dress cart in the woods when that happened? Yes. Oh, okay. So you're uh, yeah. to do so. Yeah, Rylu's not going to look for a weapon in the middle of a fight. Oh, what would Rylu do? Rylu's not dumb enough to just straight up face a Jurassicar, like head on charging at them. I mean, like they're dumb, but they're not that dumb. What do you do in this situation? I wish I would have thought about it. Maybe, maybe Charlie can go first and drop her, her razor ring down to you. <laughs> I have one. Oh. <laughs> I just, I because I have two of them. Yeah. Um, I think that Rylu is going to try to, I don't know if this is an actual game mechanic, but maybe like knock it into the fire if they can get like another shot on its leg. I know that's going to be like a minor or major effect, but I think that's their mindset is so to try to like. I think you need to make a, the roll. And if you roll well enough, then. Well, I'm just thinking their mindset. Yeah. And that's like, cool. I think the roll is going to turn. But I mean, this Duraskar is almost as tall as the tower. You knocking it into something. Is gonna be pretty challenging. Also, it's like a small fire, right? This isn't like a bonfire. Exactly. Oh, that's not gonna. Okay, that would. Okay. Yeah, in like this picture, it's fire. a bonfire, so I'm like, I don't know. It's a huge fire. Okay. You're like, uh, oh, you burned me. <laughs> I, can someone else go? I don't know what Riley would do here yet. In this situation, Aaron isn't smart enough to know. <laughs> I mean, I think Charlie will probably just try to do the physical onslaught again. Yeah, I mean, it did bump into and sort of rock your tower there so yeah it's pretty close to you. you could almost yeah really touch it from where it is yeah she's not gonna try <laughs> <laughs> yeah no um so could i uh argue that this would be a task requiring incredible focus or concentration what's the task that you're trying to, to attack it with a physical onslaught I, I look so. yeah i think that makes sense Okay, cool. Cause I'm trained in that. <laughs> and I'm able to apply the effort again, right? Cause it's a new round. Okay. You have stuff in that pool. You are able to apply your effort. Yeah, this is, my pool's gonna drain really fast. Okay, yeah. So she's gonna use the physical onslaught again, um, apply to effort and- All right. And yeah. And so now you have to hit a six. So perfect. You hit it. So, yeah, uh, you rolled an eight. So you did four damage, and it is looking pretty rough. It, it's, it's definitely not happy. Um, I'm really glad that I used that, the, the trained task uh, thing, because yeah. otherwise I would not have hit it with an eight. So what does it look <laughs> like this time when you actually hit it? 
Yeah, so I think probably like before, maybe like the nanites, um, like some of them probably just like were like not attacking it and other ones like hit like the flesh, like but like didn't like actually cause damage. And now it's like they're like, now that I'm concentrating more, like because I use that, uh, I, I was like, I'm focusing and concentrating more on this attack. Um, they're like kind of like shooting in like um, at like a higher uh, velocity, I guess, and piercing the the flesh of the Draskar. Okay, yeah, that's awesome. So you do your damage, and it is it is looking rough. So good. <laughs> Hillian and Rylu, who's going to take their turn next? Um, Hillian will attempt to attack the Jiraskar with their bow and will expend some effort to do so, uh, two effort to do so. Okay. So we'll see what that brings. So you need to, that hits, uh, that's a TD three. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> nope. So a two is not going to hit it. Okay. So, are you moving around? Are you sticking in place? Um, I think... Give me a perception check before you make your decision. Sure. Let me do that. Just a straight intellect roll. An eight? Yeah, you can see that these Anine are starting to uh, buck and uh, pull, and you, you see that they are... Their restraints are going to break pretty soon. I'm going to call out to the Anine and console them. Okay. Which I have a... Um, you are trained I'm, in I'm consoling trained in Yes. Yes. <laughs> or, you know, you can use emotional support, I suppose. I don't know. Either one of those. But only... No one is their emotional support animal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So I will, I will do so. Okay. Oh, with a 17, you can apply a minor effect, too. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I think that um, I'm kind of just attuned to all of the animals, and so I'm able to just kind of intuitively calm them down. Okay. And it, sure, they're scared. Maybe they're bucking a little bit, but I think Hillian either has, like, a whistle that uh, he uses or, or something that is comforting. Yeah, I think that'll buy you a couple more rounds of them sticking around. Cool. All right, and that leaves Rylu. I think uh, Rylu is going to try. How wait, how tall is this thing? Like ten feet tall? Yeah, roughly. All right. Yeah, Rylu can't do that. I was gonna say like Rylu's gonna try to kick off a tree and attack the face. That's not gonna happen. Rylu's just gonna have to go for the leg. I mean. Right now, they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. They got the forest, or they got the Jurassic, so... Yeah. Um, and y'all are making a crap ton of noise. Can okay, I always go for a swim? <laughs> to be fair, what's going to attack another Jurassic? Like, it could be a second Jurassic, but everything else is gone. That's fair. Um, <laughs> this is true. Except for whatever maybe lies in the deep. <laughs> and then a Kraken appears. <laughs> never. What? I would love to see a Kraken eat this Draskar right now. Um, <laughs> I've played sea of the, I'll shoot it with my cat. Battle of the beasts, you right. <laughs> uh yeah, I'm just gonna attack. I can't I can't send any more from my might, so it's with my medium blade training, it's just gonna be a TD4. Alright, let's see it. A seven, dude. What is up with sevens and ones? Hey, it, a seven is a better than is better than a one. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's the draft, mm -hmm. turn, and mm -hmm. it seems to be regaining control of its faculties slowly. Uh, I'm just gonna give this to y'all as a perception thing. You can tell that it is super, super angry. <laughs> I mean, I would be too. <laughs> It is slowly, it, it is starting to be able to focus a little bit more. It is actually going to headbutt the uh, structure that mm -hmm. Charlie is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I saw that coming. <laughs> and rock it. It is not going to knock it down. This thing is surprisingly sturdy. Like, the Jurassic hit it, and it... It shook it, but it did not 
do as much damage as you would expect, in part because the Jurassar is still a little weak. So mm -hmm. that's what it does, is it just, you know, tries to headbutt this thing and knock it over. It does not succeed. So we're in round four. Plus. Rylu has an idea. Take oh boy, okay. Take it away. Rylu wants to try to climb up to this thing's head, like from its back. So Rylu's gonna like jump on the tail and attempt to scramble on top of this thing while it's disoriented. Okay. So for an action like that, even with this poison, you're gonna have to do something. I have careful movement, climbing, physical performance. No. <laughs> <laughs> you do also have the uh, benefit of Hillian encouraging presence so isn't that speed defense it gives you an asset yes and you're running up its back it's gonna get a reaction to that i mean mm. you don't think that jumping on something's back that's 10 feet tall and running up it's not going to be able to react to that is that what is that your argument that's very much my argument because Riley was fast and is scuttling and this thing just headbutted a wooden tower under a mind control poison. Yeah, a mind disruption <laughs> poison. Yeah. And I do think that it would get a re uh, reaction to yeah. try It's and your world. I'm just living in a kill. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to I'm not going to give you running 10 feet to attack it up its back without some sort of difficulty check here. Also, have you ever tried to... Oh, no, I expect the difficulty check. I thought I was making an attack. Okay. Well, it's going to try and shake you off. Oh, yeah, that's fair. I thought you was attacking me, and I was like... It, mm. It's a reaction, is what I'm saying. Cool. The reaction is to try and shake you off before you get there. Oh, yeah, I figured that. That's why I was saying, like, careful movement, climbing, okay, balance. So go ahead, and you're adding all of those. I'm giving you the defense thing. Cool. Um, so you have to beat a TD2 with everything <laughs> you have applied. Anybody but me, I would hey, be fine with that. No, I'm worried for this role. TD one can sometimes is a bit much in this game, so it's fine. All right, let's do it. We're gonna we're gonna go. For TD it. two. Oh, oh my goodness, dude! I rolled three ones today. You have. You gotta be kidding you just, me. You just failed a typical task that just requires focus, but most people can usually do this, Rylu. I, most I people. My last XP for Riley. Oh my god. Thank you. Okay, so here's the thing. I hate this system. Not the not Numenera, but I mean this whatever we're on. Fantasy Grounds. You didn't hate it last time when it was giving you a whole bunch of really good rolls. Didn't hate I it. wasn't fighting a yeah. Jaskar. <laughs> a six. Exactly what you needed. Right Yay! God. Okay, so you get up to the thing's head and now you're able to do your attack. Yeah, I want to stab it in the head. Okay. Let's go for it. <laughs> okay. I'm applying so much might to this. <laughs> Two whole effort. Um, and I have my blade. So I don't know if I get like an asset for this or if it does extra damage. I have no idea. But I got my two effort in and I got my medium blade training. So Okay, so that drops it. I, it will, I will actually even give you, since you succeeded on climbing all the way up it without um, the problem. I'll give you a, another asset drop for that, basically. It's just, so it's a TD1. You have to roll a three <laughs> or better. To oh my goodness. Anyone else why still nervous? Why am I so worried about this? Because it's a Jurassgar. If Once this poison wears off. <sighs> a five. Okay, a five. So you need to be the three. You succeed. You hit it. <laughs> What's the I'm less worried about the Jurassic. I'm more worried about Riley's rolls. <laughs> right, same. Is that four uh, points of damage? It does four points of damage, yeah. Okay. And now who's going to take a turn? Alien or Charlie? Uh, Charlie can. Um, she is going to use the razor ring this time, though, because my intel intellect pool is getting real low. <laughs> okay, so actually, before we do that, you let's get this description for what it looks like when you hit this thing with the sword how how does this look for for Rylu? and you you jump on this thing and 
your it's it's trying to shake you off as you run up it so you know your feet are remarkably steady considering how shuddering this thing is and stuttery it is like as it's shaking you're able to grab onto it actually has like these long sort of quills on its back just inter intermittently placed and you seem to be able to grab them um, at the points where they're not sharp and use them to sort of stabilize yourself as you go up so you get up there and what happens i think so rilu is like seeing this thing headbutting the tower and um and it's just like panicked at this point and so the tail comes by rilu and rilu gets that idea whether brilliant or ridiculously dumb who knows um and they they watch as it comes back and Rylu jumps on the tail and like starts climbing and grabbing onto the quills and running like when it lowers its back a little bit and then it tries to shake it off and um, I think the reason that it was a one and then a seven is Rylu's back hit the tower like they they stumbled and their back hit the tower instead of falling off and they were able to like re-grab onto a quill and they climbed back up to the top and I think as they got up there, you know, they tried to plunge the the sword into the head to kill it, but I think its skull was a lot thicker than they expected, <laughs> which is why it's not dead. Yeah. <laughs> Just highly maimed. <laughs> yeah, it's very unhappy though. Yeah, it, it it is it is beat up. So <laughs> you run up its back, you cleave at its head. It it definitely cuts, but not as deep as you want. But you know. A very reasonable amount and as you're recovering immediately to your right like if you were just to turn your head slowly to the right you would be looking directly into Charlie's eyes because you two are on basically the same level at this point and Charlie is right next to you if they wanted to they could try to step out and join you on top of the Draskar that's how close you are Charlie, what are you doing? Uh, so would that mean that I'm close enough that if I use the razor ring, would I be able to slash rather than throw it? Sure. Okay. Dope. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do that then. <laughs> uh, effort. <laughs> Cause yes. Um, yeah, no, I, like I said, Charlie is not built for combat. Yeah, so she's. I'm just going to apply it to effort and cross my fingers. <laughs> That's going to be it for us today. I'm Kelric, your narrator. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Cormalon. That's C-O-R-M-A-L-L-O-N. And I also monitor the EQ Points Twitter. I do this every other Sunday. And on alternating Saturdays, I get to play in our fantastic... Uh, Starfinder game, and hopefully we'll have a couple other things coming out in the nearest future. I've been Aaron, um, and uh, you can find me over at Twitter at Space Persona. Um, I've also recently started streaming on Twitch. Um, I haven't for the last week, but I just released a new stream schedule, so if you feel free to go over. It's at twitch.tv forward slash catalyst, K-A-T-O-L-Y-S, and I'll be streaming from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. at least. Uh, Monday through Thursday, um, Pacific Standard Time. So feel free to come hang out and say hi. Thanks all for tuning in. I'm Cage and I've been Charlie. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter at Rage Cage Rugger, R A G E K A G E X R U G G E R. Um, and so, and a, a fun little thing is uh, I've been featured in a short story anthology you can find that on drive through fiction it's called flashbang a collection of very short stories we bought our copy <laughs> um and yes uh i'm kenny you can find me on twitter at punter drone when i'm not playing a meat eating bunny um i am uh dming a game uh every other saturday on experience points this channel here catch us next saturday as we uh delve into um our next episode of uh, the Dawn of Flame Adventure Path, Soldiers of Brass. And it was amazing. Cannot wait to continue the story. So uh, you can find us there on, on this channel next Saturday.
Thank you all so much. This has been fantastic. Bye. 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 Thank you so much for listening to Cumanera, an Excorian's Points podcast. Are your ears burning for another podcast? We cannot recommend enough checking out our sister podcast, Roll to Fail. There are six friends who have no business behind the mic, or even rolling dice. The original Excorian's Points podcast is a Starfinder game that releases every Wednesday. Stay up to date on all the Excorian's Points Network podcasts at EQ Points on Twitter and on ExcorianzPoints.com. Pardon our dust as I continue updates on the website. Thank you so much for listening. Hello and welcome to St. Fleur, where the city is modern, the fantasy is urban, and the faction politics are at an all-time high. Join us in Shadows of St. Fleur as we follow the wizard, Alistair Lockwood. Regret to inform you, I'm not a wizard. I am a master of the arcane arts. The scholar, Jeremiah Roderick Crawford. I'm an earl, you know. You're a baron. Those words carry some weight. The wolf, Victor Margaret. Victor stands on the bridge in the cold. Fuck. The fae who is known only as Silk. Um, do we know if this was a, you know, was a standard mugging? And the vamp, Alex Jero. Quite. Because the first time the door opens, I'm going to push her out. Through their experience in the city. Shadows of St. Fleur is an Urban Shadows actual play podcast with a majority LGBTQ plus cast playing characters finding their way through faction politics, all in pursuit of their own individual goals. Find it wherever you listen to podcasts.